more analysis, I'm joined by Yuki Tatsumi from the uh, Simpson Center and International Security Think Tank in Washington. She's a senior fellow and co-director of its East Asia program, program. Thank you very much, Yuki, for your time. Now, the Biden administration has been relatively lacking in economic engagement in the region up until this point. Of course, we heard a little bit about, uh, you know, why he's there in terms of uh, countering China's influence, supply chain issues, that sort of thing. But why now? Um, I think the uh, timing of this uh, announcement of Indo-Pacific Economic Framework is really timed with the uh, President Biden's um, inaugural trip to Asia. Um, it has been launching a lot of um, diplomatic offensive, if you will, and then also in the uh, military relations as to, to shoring up the alliances and partnership in the region. But as you pointed out, uh, there really has little, there has been really little initiative on the economic and trade front. and. Uh, this, uh, this, I think, uh, would symbolize uh, its uh, willingness to also engage in the uh, economy and trade. Asian economies, though, have largely relied on China as their engine for growth, especially since the 1997 and 98 Asian financial crisis. What might be the main drivers for these economies to lean towards the United States now? I think that um, as the... Um, Russian invasion of Ukraine shows, and how how the uh, Chinese stance on these uh, on this uh, military aggression in other another sovereign country um, in Europe uh, shows. I think it does uh, provoke a lot of concerns in the uh, countries in the countries in the region that the uh, Chinese willingness to uh, stand by with the uh, stand by with the uh, play by the rule, if you will, to uphold the uh, current the rule based international order. And then I think that uh, Biden administration. Um, effort to launch this uh, Indo-Pacific economic framework is the uh, is their um, is their attempt to um, offer an alternative to so those countries the Pacific trade pact negotiated by the Obama administration a decade ago is pretty toxic here in the United States it was rejected by the labor movement on the left and abandoned by President Trump how will this pact be different in regards not just to the agreement itself but how will it be received here in the United States do you think I think that is still uh, remains to be seen. Um, to me, this sounds uh, from from the sound of it, this sounds very, very similar to Trans-Pacific Partnership. And uh, because of uh, the political condition that you mentioned at home, um, it is uh, nearly impossible for Biden administration or any U.S. administration that follows, in particular on this regard, um, to simply return to the Trans-Pacific Partnership or even pay, um, making a progress toward it. So I do think that this is the uh, attempt to, um, I guess, uh, next uh, go around on the part of um, Biden administration to try something similar, but that is really more focused on the uh, supply and chain resiliency, um, economic security, a um, lot of those concerns that have been, uh, that have been invoked since the uh, Russian aggression of Ukraine. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure on the United States and you know, countries internationally to uh, you know, ease up supply chains, to try and work on inflation. How far will this pact go to try and press those results f forward, and how quickly could it come? Again, um, it is a little bit premature to um, predict any of those, but I think one, one key thing to watch is that how it could work um, organically with the existing framework that uh, that region already has. Um, as, as we all know, after U.S. withdrew from TPP, um, remaining countries did gather up and muster things up and uh, actually agreed on comprehensive and progressive, progressive but transpacific Pacific Partnership. So this could work organically with this uh, CPTPP to on the uh, very much focused on the supply chain resiliency and securing um, securing some of those critical materials in advanced technology, uh, safeguarding the uh, use of uh, advanced technology and digital economy and so forth. But um, the, I think uh, those whether those uh, two frameworks uh, can organically work together to create a, a good alternative for the uh, countries in the region. I think um, it takes a while to shake things out. Yuki, thank you so much for your insight there. Yuki Tatsumi for us.